my uh, forthcoming sessions, including this one, we'll be speaking about stability at large angles of heel. So when we talk about the stability at large angles of heel, uh, it should be understood that stability is evident from the shape of the curve, shape of the GZ curve, its extension, vertical and horizontal, and the relevant criteria, which I have told you in one of my previous lectures too. Now, stability at large angles of heel, I'll be uh, covering in my next two, three lectures. But right now, it is important to understand the GZ curve. And we will also try to understand why this GZ curve is also called curve of statical stability. Have you ever asked anybody he, why the GZ curve is curve of statical stability also? What is opposite of statical stability? Is it dynamical stability? Well, dynamical stability is not opposite of statical stability. Statical stability is the writing lever, whereas dynamical stability gives you an idea of the work done or the energy required to heal the ship to a particular angle. Generally, we say uh, dynamical stability is displacement multiplied by area under the curve till the angle in question. Right? So, so dynamical stability is not opposite of statical stability. Okay. Now, as we are understanding or trying to understand this concept, why this GZ curve is also called curve of statical stability, let us look at the GZ curve in a diagram. So, usual drawing method is, these are the lines from your pages, and then we are trying to show an inclined ship. Here is the ship. This is the middle point, line parallel to deck. Shift off wedges, you have already seen this diagram several times. Buoyancy of the wedge shifting this way, B going parallel and proportional to B1. G is somewhere here. Here is the upward force, downward force and this is the writing lever. If we extend this line down here and call that point K and if we draw a line parallel to the GZ and try to see the separation between the keel, the transverse separation between the keel and center of buoyancy, then that measure is called Kn. Shipyard provides us the data on Kn. As you can see, Kn, distance between K and N, depends on the underwater profile, underwater part of the ship. So in a way, Kn does not depend on the density of water, it depends on the underwater shape of the ship. That's why when you see the KN tables which are given for displacement and if your ship is in top water what you need to do is displacement has to be multiplied with salt water density and then divide by dock water density and then what displacement figure you get for that you see the KN. So KN minus kg sin theta gives you GZ. So this is how we get GZ data for large angles of E or any angle of E. Now if you look at this formula carefully you will appreciate that for a given draft suppose the ship is floating in salt water for a given draft we have the KN data available and then depending on what is the kg of the ship the GZ will vary. So GZ does depend on the kg. Now talking about the KN KN depends on the underwater part and if you look at the water line, this is the present water line at say theta angle. This was the original water line when the vessel was upright. Both these water lines are straight lines. Both these water lines represent lake sea condition. Both these water lines, they represent glassy sea, static water. And that's why the name curve of statical stability. It is like shipyard telling you, look, we cannot make the KN or GZ tables for the ships for infinite permutations and combination of waves. We will give you the GZ for static sea condition. And you must satisfy the criteria, assuming that the vessel is rolling in static sea. Before you can say that, you are generally fit to sail out with required minimum stability. Now you will ask me what is 
opposite of curve of statical stability. Opposite of curve of statical stability is stability in dynamic condition or wave condition. Now suppose the GZ value is given to you by the shipyard as is shown in the diagram and suppose the ship is healed in this diagram for an angle of theta then what GZ I have here is coming from here right so this is the relationship between the GZ curve and this diagram now with the help of another diagram I will try to explain you what happens in the waves where we have the data for static sea conditions what happens in dynamic conditions Now this is the data in respect of the stability provided by the shipyard. You can see that the water levels are static. But what happens when the wave profile is like this? The wave profile is like this. The crest is over here and trough is over here. That means this portion buoyancy has shifted here. Compared to the static heel condition, if the buoyancy of this portion has shifted up. Buoyancy has gone from here to here. This means the center of buoyancy has come here. The upthrust instead of working from here is working from here. It means that the vessel instead of becoming upright will further go down. This means the vessel is behaving like an unstable vessel. On the other hand, as the vessel is inclined here and we are provided with the stability of intact sea condition. If the wave profile is like this, compared to the wedges which we are talking about in intact sea condition, this extra part, this extra part is shifted here in terms of buoyancy. So buoyancy of this sector, so buoyancy of this part has shifted over here. That means additionally in comparison with the intact sea condition, the B1 will go further down over here maybe to the position B3 so that when the upthrust is applied from here the writing lever has increased so looking at these two situations as I have shown with green and red color looks like in dynamic conditions ship sometimes behave like a stiff ship and sometimes she behaves like a tender ship Sometimes she would even behave like an unstable vessel. So this is what happens in dynamic condition. A master who has been given data and master who has been taught the entire stability in institutes, he should know that the data that is provided is data for intact sea conditions. And in dynamic conditions, this may happen. You might find the ship has rolled to 20 degrees and then as she is coming back, Instead of coming back, she is further gone down to say 28 degrees. So at that moment, at that instant, she is behaving like an unstable vessel. On the other hand, sometimes as the ship has healed to 20 degrees, she comes back very violently. That means she is behaving like a very stiff vessel. So we must also remember the ship's rolling behavior in beam seas, where we had studied if wave encounter period is less than ship's rolling period, ship rolls into the sea and when the wave encounter period is more than the ship's rolling period, ship rolls along with the sea. Now, uh, why I raise this topic that why the curve is called curve of statical stability that masters who are trained to become ship handlers, they should not believe that the data that is provided by the shipyards is ultimate data. 
In my another lecture, we will also try to understand what happens when there is a wave which is approximately equal to the length of the ship and traveling in the same direction or reciprocal direction as the ship's movement. What happens when the crest is amidship and what happens when the trough is amidship? So what happens is, in such a situation, where the crest is amidship, the GZ curve shrinks and on another occasion where the trough is amidship, the GZ curve amplifies and this is what gives rise to parametric rolling. I hope you have enjoyed the lecture and I hope you will compare, observe, monitor, etc. the behavior of the ship's rolling in dynamic sea conditions.